Hello guys, Yonaldo here. Today I want to talk about the shader network that is made by deploying when you export for Cycles and Eevee in Blender. So let's get started. First, let's talk about my Blender scene. All I have here is the UE12 texture. It already has UVs and a material assigned. Since I'm using high displacement in Cycles, I also want this geo to have a subdip modifier. As a light source, I only have an HDR environment. Remember that for PBR materials, realistic lights are really important. In my case, I'm using Tomoko Studio in both Blender and Substance Painter. And in Painter, all I have is the geo I sent from Blender already textured. With the setup out of the way, let's send the most basic PBR material to Blender and check the shader network. As we can see here, the surface node we're using is the principle. It is connected to the surface input of the material output. The distribution of the principle is set to GGX to better match Painter. The rest is kept as default. Then we have the texture maps. All of them receive the vector value from the UV output of a texture coordinate node. Since we are using a most basic PBR metal roughness workflow, the available texture maps are base color, metallic, roughness, and normal. Each map is assigned to an image texture node and depending on the map, the color space is either set to sRGB or non-color. So base color is set to sRGB, metallic, roughness and normal are set to non-color. If you don't want to deal with the sRGB gamma adjustments and use a linear workflow instead, all you need to do is to enable the linear workflow checkbox in the channel staff of the Painter plugin. As you can see, base color, metallic, and roughness are connected directly to the principle node, and the normal texture is connected first to a normal map node. If we see the results in Eevee, and now in Cycles, we can see both look pretty similar to what we have in Painter. Now let's talk about the optional maps. These are maps that are not required to create a PBR material, but can help to create a specific look in the material. The first optional channel is the ambient occlusion. This can be added to the texture set either manually or by making the ambient occlusion map of the geo. We enable it and click send. And now a new texture node with the ambient occlusion map will be added and it will be multiplying the base color. The color space used for it will be the same as the base color, in this case it's RGB, and the result will be a light darkening to the included parts of the material. Next, we have the emissive map. Again, first we check that the channel is available in the texture set, then we enable it and click send. A new texture node with the emissive map will be added. This one is multiplied by a value node that controls the intensity of the emissive map. This value node can be set via the emission field of the channel staff of the painter plugin. The greater the value, the brighter the emission. The result is connected to the emission of the principle node. Next, we have the opacity map. First, we check that the channel is available in the texture set and click send. And the new texture node will be connected to the alpha input of the principle material. Unlike other maps, this one won't look fine out of the box on Eevee. An additional step is required. You need to select the material go to settings and change the blend mode. Depending on the type of material, a different blend mode will be required, but usually setting it to alpha clip will be fine for most materials. If you are using cycles from the beginning, it will work as expected. Next, we have the hide map. This one won't work on Eevee at the moment, but will work on cycles. We check that the channel is available in the texture set and click send. A new texture node will be connected to a displacement and the displacement will be connected to the third input of the material output node. The displacement node has two parameters, the mid-level and the scale. As with emission, those fields can be set via the channel tabs of the Painter plugin. Scale will define the amount of displacement and the mid-level will define the midpoint. 0.5 if you want to both positive and negative displacement, 0 if you want only positive and 1 if you only want negative. The more polygons you have on your mesh, the better results. That is why I'm using a subdip modifier in my geo. Then we have an isotropy level and angle. These two usually are used together, so we check the channels are available and click send. The 
Two new textures nodes will be added with a non-color color space and will be connected directly to the principal LED node, into the anisotropic and anisotropic rotation respectively. Finally, we have scattering. We check the channels that are available and click send. This texture node will be connected to the subsurface input of the preset LED node. If you select the standard pack instead of the standard as the preset, the only difference is that instead of having two maps, one for metallic and one for roughness, you'll have one map with the metallic in the green channel and the roughness in the blue channel, as you can see here. Well, that's all for now. In the next video, we'll talk about the unit's workflow when working with Cycles and EV.